Good morning, and welcome to Annunciation Parish. Today we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Steve. Before we begin our celebration, there are a few announcements. Father Steve will hold a second Ask the Pastor virtual question and answer session this Monday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. Your questions will be answered on Facebook Live with a recording posted later on the website. Feel free to submit your questions on the website by phone to the office or by dropping them in the basket. We will hold our monthly hospitality dinner today on a takeout basis between 11.30 and 1.30. Instructions are in the bulletin and the website. If you would like to volunteer, you can go to Holy Rosary Hall at 11 p.m. and seek out Eileen O'Shea. Gift bags of family resources will be given out this Sunday in the upper hall at Holy Rosary before and after the 1030 Mass. At this time, books for home study and passcodes for the first through sixth graders to play the Wonderlight game will be available as well. Give you thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out with a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and the Lamb wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. And the angels stood around the throne and all around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Our response is, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of slander against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, really, Jesus speaks some very hopeful words. He talks about a reality, a reality that's hard for us to see. We get so focused on the things right around us, right? All the things in front of us, what we can see, what we can touch, what we can hear. We forget that there are other realities. 
There's another whole world of reality, and there are different kinds of outcomes than we may expect. There are different kinds of outcomes the Lord brings that the world may not consider, but we know are there and worthy. Jesus says that those who are mourning, those who are meek, who are poor in spirit, those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, they can expect a consolation. Maybe not consolation from the guy up the street, maybe not consolation from the one who's persecuting you, but Jesus promises that there is a consolation. And he speaks about another group, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are merciful, who are clean of heart, who are peacemakers. And he says they will receive what these things that they're seeking, and also another reward besides. So what is he talking about? What is he talking about? And how does this relate to us? What is it that we should take from this? Well, right in front of our face, all the time, are these things that we see in the world. There's this world, this physical, material world we see. But Jesus is calling us to see another reality, the reality of his kingdom. When we are connected to Jesus, we can enter into a reality that goes beyond the world we see, that goes beyond the behaviors other people do, that goes beyond hard things like that. It's a reality that's no less real. It's something that, in which we can expect a consolation for our difficult times and a good outcome for our goodness. Twice in the reading today, Jesus speaks about the kingdom of heaven. So what's he talking about? What is the kingdom of heaven? Well, really, two things. First, It is that kingdom, that kingdom where he sits in gloriously reigning in heaven. We heard about this in the first reading, right? All the angels around the throne, glorious worship going on. This place of peace, of rest, of eternal happiness. He's also talking about something else. Because he talks about his kingdom here on earth which is that part of that kingdom which extends into our world that's there that we don't quite see sometimes. There's a whole other world beyond this one. And participating in that kingdom in the way Jesus mentions helps us to see beyond the realities and limitations of this world into a kingdom which lies right there behind it. The goal of sainthood, for which we are all called, should be the ultimate goal of our life. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. We remember all of those who have entered into the kingdom of God in heaven. We remember the lives of these many individuals, and there are many saints that we recognize and we remember, right? Like St. Thomas, St. John, St. Jude, St. This, St. The Other, that has a feast day. And on that feast day, we remember something about their life. We remember the great example they set for us. But there are other saints. There are other saints that we don't know of. Other saints that lived a quiet and holy life and followed our Lord Jesus, who remain connected to him and are in that crowd in heaven. And today we remember all of those, those unnamed holy ones. The first reading paints a picture of what the heavenly world looks like. We see this picture, a glorious celebration. And notice, God is at the center, as he should be at the center in this kingdom too. The center of everything. And around him, elders and living creatures and the angels. And this whole vast multitude robed in white, who we hear are from every land, every nation, every language, this group are the saints. Saints are human beings who are now in heaven, while angels are spiritual beings that God has created and that surround God in heaven and also God uses to touch our world. 
humans don't become angels. Some people kind of say that, you know, but they don't become angels, but we have the chance to become saints. I say the chance to become saints because it's not an absolute guarantee. There is this free gift of sainthood, this free gift of an eternal life with God in heaven in that glory that he offers to us, but we have to do our part to claim it. When the question is asked in the reading, who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? The answer that's given is, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There's something they have done. There's something they have done, all of them. The voice doesn't say, well, this is everyone who ever lived who's here. They had to do something. Now, it's not that they had to do something to gain the admission price, to get the ticket price of heaven, they had to do stuff. That's not the way it works. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying that they had to enter into that life of Christ. They had to enter something. They had to participate in that salvation. God simply doesn't pluck everyone out and just give them that salvation. It's there, and you have to come. If you get the winning lottery ticket, the lottery doesn't show up at your house to deliver it. You've got to go to the office and pick it up. There's something we always have to do for a great thing. And this is something we have to ask. What do we have to do? What is it that we do to wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb? Which is what all of those saints have done. To wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Well, this is partially a reference to baptism, right? That they have been baptized. They've had themselves cleansed and washed. And just like the waters of baptism symbolize that cleansing, after when someone, the baby's baptized, you'll know we clothe them in a white garment, which is exactly a reference to this, right? That white garment that we have been given. Now cleansed from all sin, cleansed and made pure, we can be added and enter into the body of Christ. And now it's inside that body. It's joined as part of that body that we are able to enter into heaven, that creatures like us can wind up in heaven. But we have to remain inside that body. We have to be part of that body. We have to keep that robe clean. Just like the man in the gospel reading we heard maybe a month or so ago, who was at the wedding banquet but was made to leave because he didn't have the proper garment on. We have to have ourselves in that state. Once baptized, we have to continue to work to be part of that body. And there's different ways we do that, different ways we keep that robe clean. One way is we have to act with Jesus to move with that body, right? If the body goes left and we go right, you see how you can't stay inside it. You wind up distancing yourself. Sin causes us to have to be moved outside that body. Jesus can't have anything sinful inside of him. So the sin causes us to have to to step from that body. When we move with Jesus... When we hunger and thirst for righteousness and try to bring it about, when we are merciful, when we work and we have true faith and hope, remain clean of heart, and when we are peacemakers, when we do all those sorts of things, and also when we act like the saints and we pray to God, think about being part of that, of that kingdom, the kingdom of, that extends into this earth, when we praise God, we worship him like you're doing today, when at that glory at the beginning of Mass, we are saying with them the praises they are saying to God. When we get to the Holy Holy, you'll hear, I will invite us to all to pray with the saints and angels as they are praying. When we come in true acts of worship like that, we remain part of Jesus who is part of that worship in heaven and all those saints We enter into the kingdom on this earth. 
And the more we share in that kingdom of, of heaven here on earth, the more now we can experience the benefits of that kingdom. It's the, the future of that kingdom spills into the present. When we have consolations when we mourn and are sad, when we are lifted up when poor in spirit, when we're protected, when we receive an inspiration, when we receive a consolation we don't know where from, when we are receive a blessing that we don't know where it came from or unexplainable in a certain way, we can try to explain it, but we can realize that's part of our participation in that kingdom and some of the blessings of that kingdom spilling out into our lives because we are entering into it. St. Paul tells us today, Beloved, we are God's children now. That is, since baptism, where we become a child of God. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. What the future holds for us is not revealed. It's in living like Jesus in this life that we remain pure enough to stay within his body. And as part of that body, we can enter into heaven. Paul says also, everyone who has this hope, this hope of entering into sainthood, based on him, makes himself pure. This hope is what we celebrate today as we remember these many unnamed saints, those who have remained pure, those who have stayed and moved with the body of Jesus Christ, those who have entered into that kingdom as much as they could here on earth and are now remaining in that kingdom in the next world. It's the hope that if we continue to wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb here at celebrations of the Eucharist, where those minor and venial sins the things that we do that to take us off track can be forgiven. As we go to confession for those times when we really tear a rip in that relationship and we live and we act as Jesus taught, we become more like Jesus. We enter more and more into that kingdom here on earth and one day can share in that great celebration as one of the saints in heaven. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now join in our voice to the voice of all those saints in heaven who intercede for us. We offer these prayers. That the worldwide church will always draw strength and perseverance as exemplified by all the unnamed saints.
who stayed true to their calling, we pray to the Lord. That all who suffer the violence of war be blessed with lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. That all who hunger and thirst for righteousness be blessed with the fullness of truth, we pray to the Lord. That all who grieve the loss of a loved one be blessed with the healing and acceptance, we pray to the Lord. That God may inspire all Christians to be faithful citizens, protecting the most vulnerable, especially unborn children, we pray to the Lord. That all who gather at this feast be blessed with unity in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. That the faithful departed may rejoice forever in the presence of Christ, especially Alfred Richard and Lenny Mitko, whom we remember at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we lift these prayers to you, we ask you to hear them as you hear the voices of the saints that surround you. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us and our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with all the multitude of angels and saints as with one voice we pray.
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people who have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially for Alfred Richard and Lenny Mikko, and for all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have run my room, but all the say the word, and my soul shall be.
We adore you, O oh God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your sins. We employ your grace so that, coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's hands. May God the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers. Bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Free through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. That together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where the Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon.